Prior to making any changes to Joomla's core files, whether you're making an upgrade to Joomla, installing plugins, or testing out a new feature that's going to make severe changes to your website, you're going to want to do a backup of your Joomla installation. The way you'll do it is going to open up your web browser. And I like using Google Chrome, so I'll choose that to go to connect to the internet. We're going to go to akibabackup.com. And here you're going to look for Akiba Backup for Joomla. I'm going to go click on that. And from here, you're going to download the core installation for this. This does change regularly because it's updated. If you're looking to see if it's compatible with your version of Joomla, they have a compatibility chart here that you can click on as well. From here, you'll uh, scroll down to Akiba Backup for Joomla. And as you can see, it's available for different types of websites. I'll click on that. And from here, you can see the chart. In my case, I actually have uh, Joomla 3.6 installed. And the required minimum version for this one, it looks like it's 5.4, which I do meet the requirements. I'll go ahead and back up a little bit here. Or as a matter of fact, you can even just click it from here. And we're going to be downloading the very latest one from Akiva Backup. Here you can see again, Akiva Backup Core 5.5, 5.25. And I'll go ahead and click on download. And it's a very quick download. And as you can see now, it's done. I'll go ahead and run my WAMP server. And as you can see, the WAMP server here is loading up and it's green. So all services are go. I'll go ahead and click left click on it and go to localhost, which will open up the WAMP configuration settings. From here, I can definitely see that my server is now running. And I can also see the PHP version that I'm running. Again, the, when you're looking for the um, compatibility matrix, that will, this will show you whether or not your current version is compatible or not. Now from here, I can see, again, like I said, that you can see your version. I'm going to just open up another uh, tab, go to localhost. And I'm going to go ahead and put a forward slash Joomla because that's where my installation's at. And as you can see, I have a very plain vanilla website. Nothing's installed on it. But what I want to do now is going to go ahead and go to the administrators or administrators logon page. Here I'm going to go ahead and log on. Okay. Click never on that. And as you can see, there's additional updates available. I'm currently running Joomla 3.60. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to keep it just at 3.60. I'm going to go ahead and go to Extensions, Manage, and Install. Now, before you go any further, make sure that when you log into the back end of Joomla, matter of fact, I'm going to go back one more step here. As you can see, I'm, I'm logged in right now as the super user. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you're, you're logged in with something that's uh, an account that has full rights on the back end of Joomla. Otherwise, you'll see installation issues. Okay, we're going to go back to manage. And uh, as you can see, there's a different way of doing it from here. But uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and just upload the package and uh, choose choose file. It's in my downloads folder. So let's see. Here we go. And here it is. Here's the package that I installed just a moment ago. I'll click on open. I'll click on upload and install. As you can see here, there's an error generated while I try to install the plugin. It's simply saying that there's a configuration in my PHP INI file preventing the plugin to install because of the max file size. Now what you're going to want to do is one, uh, from here, since I still have the download open here, um, I'm going to click on show folder and the plugin itself is two point, a little bit over two megabytes, just uh, just a little bit over two megabytes. So now that we know that information, I'm going to go to my WAMP server here on the right hand side, left click on it. We're going to go to PHP. From here, we're looking for php.ini. I'll left click on that. As you can see, I have notepad plus plus instead of notepad installed and this is a very useful tool to have because it gives you all kinds of additional numbering and highlights uh, for your syntax it's easier to look at the configuration files now here i can see from the error generated from joomla 
one of the things that we're looking for, matter of fact, I'll go ahead and just select this here, is upload underscore max underscore file size. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Copy. Go back over here and I'll do a search. And from here, I can see my, my, my limit is 2 megabytes. So I'm going to increase that to 8 megabytes. Now, you don't want to up, uh, increase this by too much because it is a security concern. But since this is a local development environment on my local machine, and it's not live, it's only for testing purposes, this is just fine. Okay, so now that's one of the settings. The second setting is post max size. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on that, copy it, come over here again, and I can still find. I'm going to just replace this. I have an extra space here. Find that. And that looks like it's set to 8 megabytes. That's fine. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just save this file. Go ahead and close this. Now, for this to take effect, you're going to want to restart Joom, um, your WAMP server. So from here, I'm just going to click on here, uh, left-click your WAMP server icon, and click on Restart All Services. Okay, now it's now that it's green, I know it's back up and running. So I'm going to try that one more time. Again, we're still on the same page. I'm going to go to the Upload and Package tab here. I'm going to choose File. Again, I'm going to select the, the Akiba plugin. Click Open. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click on up, Upload and Install. And if everything works fine, you should see this installation of the package was successful. Okay, now that the package was installed, what I'm going to go is I'm going to click on Components and scroll down until I see Akiba Backup. In this case, it happens to be the very first one on this list. I'll click on that. This leads me to the Configuration Wizard. And from here, I'm just going to go and click OK or click on the Configuration Wizard. And as you can see, it's running a benchmark. Uh, just to see how long it's going to take to back up and doing some configuration settings. As you can see, these lines are turning one, one by one green, and it doesn't take too long to complete. Just have to have a little patience for it to complete. Okay, now that it's finished, it says finish benchmarking. And what I want to do here is I want to do a backup of this Joomla installation on my local machine. I'm going to click on backup. And from here, it's, like, it's got a quick, short description. If you want to make a comment, you know, something like uh, prior to installing a specific plugin, you can do so. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Backup Now. And just like the uh, first screen that you saw, it's going to do the uh, rows here while it's uh, backing it up. And it doesn't take too long to back up your Joomla installation. Now, if you do have a very complicated website, you've installed a lot of plugins and you have a lot of content and you have a lot of images, this will definitely take longer. But for, for my case, since it's just a plain vanilla uh, installation, it's going to be very quick. Okay, and there you go. So from here, you can see the backup was completed successfully. I'm going to click on this blue Manager Backups button. Okay. And from here, I'll go ahead and click OK. This is basically saying, how do you want to transfer your site to another location? If you're moving it from your local machine up to the web, to a web server that's going to host your live website, it's going to show you how to restore these backups. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Got It. Okay. As you can see here, the backup has been successfully completed. You can either do one of two things. You can download it. And from here, you can definitely see that it's not recommended to do this. What you really want to do is use an FTP, uh, FTP client to download uh, these backups. Um, but in my case, since it's on a local machine and I don't have to connect to another server. Okay, so I showed you one way of downloading it um, in case you needed to transfer it, which is the download button here. Since this is my local machine, there's another way of uh, getting to this as well. I'm going to click on the I here. And you can see here, the here's the uh, full path where the file is located in case I needed that file. Here I'm just going to go ahead and open up File Explorer. Move this a little bit to the side. In my case, I have Joomla and WAMP server installed here on my C drive. 
and it's installed in the WAMP64 folder. I'm going to go to www because that's where all my websites for WAMP server are hosted. The path that I chose for the installation is just simply Joomla. As you can see, I have here multiple websites that I was testing. In this case, the one that I'm working on right now and for the demonstration of this video, it's the Joomla folder. So from here, you can definitely see, you can see that uh, where the full path of that file is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on Administrator, Components, and Com Akiba. From here, you can, you're going to see one last folder here. It's Backup. And finally, here's the file that you're going to want, that you're going to need to restore your Joomla installation should something go wrong. All right, so what I want to do is I just want to make a copy of it and I'll put it somewhere else, um, paste it here on my downloads. So that's pretty much it. That's how you do a backup of your Joomla installation. This will copy both your Joomla installation files and your database files in one swoop. Now, although you've taken a backup of your Joomla website, the, you don't consider this complete until you've actually done a restore one of the things that many people make a mistake is assuming that the backup completed okay. There's a lot of things that could happen in the background and you don't know if the backup's any good until you actually test it. So until you actually restore it, test it and see it come up properly, consider the backup as non-existent because you haven't tested it. And that's all there is to it. Thank you.